Hi, this is Shadi and today we're going back once again to the 1950s and this time it's gonna be with Masahiko Kimura and it's a professional wrestling story. I'm gonna go into the history and then break down the techniques. Here you see Kimura Nogi taking pictures for publicity for the media in the preparation for this uh, infamous match if you want to call it that. So the story goes is that in the early 1950s, Kimura founded his own wrestling association called Kokusai Pro and uh, he was invited by Ricky Dozan to compete as a professional wrestler in his own Japanese pro wrestling association. So they performed both as tag team and also fought together as opponents. Uh, they decided finally to have like a big match, Ricky Dozan versus Kimura. A match for the Japanese professional wrestling heavyweight title of the world a high-profile match but according to Kimura himself uh, it did not finish the way they had planned it or the way they had trained for it simply it did not go as planned so one of the earliest examples of a wrestling match going off script uh, during the the match so uh, the match was supposed to go to a draw and then have a, a series of rematches uh, in order to keep the publicity going and also keep making more money basically so that never happened uh, during the match Kimura was uh, stuck in the corner Ricky Dozan was supposed to strike him with karate chops to the chest uh, Ricky Dozan broke uh, he went off script and attacked Kimura for real he was striking him on the neck full force which rendered Kimura unconscious he fell on the ground and while he was on the ground, Ricky Dozan proceeded to kick him uh, and the match ended in a knockout. Kimura never got his rematch, which is a true shame. So, uh, years later, on December 8th, 1963, uh, it was in Tokyo uh, during uh, a party in a nightclub. So, Ricky Dozan was attacked and ambushed by a gangster called Katsushi Murata. Uh, who was a part of the Gokudo uh, organized crime and uh, he stabbed him with a urine soaked blade which is, which is gut wrenching just to think about it and he died a week later uh, from the infection and Kimura was uh, a suspect immediately because uh, he was saying in his autobiography I could not forgive his treachery that night I received a phone call informing me that several 10 Yakuza are on their way to Tokyo to kill Ricky Dozan, end quote. So this uh, sentence alone really raises some eyebrows. However, the historian Toshiya Masuda in 2011 uh, wrote an essay or a book called Why Kimura Didn't Kill Ricky Dozan and he dismisses this theory. So uh, without any further ado, uh, let's get into the match. So the match starts, you can see Kimura is in the short trunks, uh, barefoot, and Ricky Dozan is in the black pants and the uh, wrestling shoes. Kimura looks in pretty good shape uh, for his age. I believe he was uh, close to 40 years old around here. He was born in 17, and this is the late 1950s, I believe. So you can see here clinching uh, very much like uh, wrestling, professional wrestling context. Uh, the clinching the separates by the referee at the ropes very much like professional wrestling context so when it comes to the techniques here the first one it's a clinch you can see them clinching and here hits him with a seo and ippon seo and nage classical piece of judo and seo and nage means loading on the back and nage means throw so you can see it in many uh, jujitsu competitions today, like EBI, ADCC, uh, Combat World. Uh, all you have to do is just grab the wrist or the forearm, depending on how your arm, how big your arm is, or your hand is, and or also cup the tricep and then just hook the armpit and load them on your back. You can either do it standing, or you can do it on your knees. You go down. I believe Nathan Orchard does it uh, on his knees. So. Seonage, especially with the gi, there's many variations to it, but in no gi, it is perfectly 100% plausible to be done 
and uh, here we saw Kimura doing it in a professional wrestling uh, context. So the match continues, uh, still stalling, running around, the referee is doing his gestures, etc., trying to hype the crowd. Uh, remember, this is also show business, you have spectators here. It's an Udegarami Sumigaeshi combo. Uh, let's see it again, finished by a head scissors. Sumigai Udegarami Sumigaeshi, and here finishes with the head scissors. So, uh, I know the head scissors is like a catch thing, you see it a lot in professional wrestling and catch, but it is also an old jujitsu necklock. Here you can see Kimura at an old age in an instructional doing a Sumigaeshi uh, Udegarami combo. You can either finish uh, with uh, like a um, lock or a pin as he did here. So if it's an IJF match, uh, it would be over, but here it's cause and rule set. You have to finish uh, with the submission or the pin. So here, this is from 1906, the game of jujitsu by Yukio Tani and Taro Miyake. You can see the neck lock here, uh, pretty much a standard head scissors. The knees must be on the level of the neck in order to put pressure on the spine or even suffocate. So here, the match continues. Uh, you can see Kimura here struggling, quote unquote, struggling. Uh, trying to get the uh, crowd on his feet remember this is uh, there are spectators this is for show at the same time not just uh, technique uh, here you can see the, the the knees are on the level of the neck he's not scissoring with the shins he's uh, rather scissoring with the knees as I showed in the uh, Yukiotani uh, neck lock so here Kimura is trying to come out and he finally gets out and breaks free from the hold so here the match continues more and then here you can see more clinching uh, Ricky Dozan takes Kimura's leg lifts it up and here if I'm not mistaken he's about to lock a figure four toe hold a classical ankle lock here it's locked Kimura's trying to acting like he's fighting it and resisting it uh, very much like WWE today so the uh, figure 4 toe hold is none other than the Ashi Dori Garami uh, an old leg lock of judo band so here he's also giving his back so this is a perfect example of uh, Ashi Dori Garami here uh, another Ude Garami Sumigaeshi combo taking down Kimura and going back up this is uh, a body slam followed by a Kamishi Ogatame or north south i know that some might say that uh, the uh, teguruma is like a body slam but the mechanics are a bit different you overhook rather than underhook uh, under be between the legs and slam them down so it is a bit different here you can see the uh, north south a very famous hold in uh, catch and jujitsu but kamishi ogatame you also have the belt you have the gi you have many variations to it uh, you can grab the both collars and do it. Uh, it's a classical judo pin that's uh, found its way in many cultures like catch and also eventually uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So uh, it's the one that he always also used against Helio Gracie in their famous match of 1953. So uh, this is again a staple of judo, a classical piece of Osai Komiwaza or pinning technique. So here the match continues, uh, Kimura is trying to grab the arm, here again another Udegarami Sumigaeshi but this time by Kimura, still grabbing on to the lock, you can see grabbing the forearms, uh, classical pieces, and then here more clinching, you can see Kimura's legs are very developed, another attempt of Seoinage which means like he was truly working hard on his muscular development etc he's in top good shape uh, very good for him so here the beginning of the end of the match uh, on the corner as i mentioned you can see the slaps and the and the strikes are pretty much real uh, kimura gets desperate shoots for a single uh, the referee breaks it up he's stomping on the leg uh, still happens till this day so here you see he's talking to the ref he blindsides him when he's talking to the ref almost gets knocked out this looks pretty much real it's very look he's pretty much blindsiding him 
I believe the story is real. This wasn't scripted. This doesn't look scripted. Look at this. Uh, the slaps looks pretty much 100% real and this is not the end of it. He goes back to the corner, uh, the referee checks if he's okay, Kimura wants to continue. Here, bam, this is the chop on the neck that rendered him unconscious. The referee goes to count, I believe up to 10 counts uh, and then uh, Kimura could not get up. And he, Ricky Dozan was declared the winner. So you can pretty much see the blows were 100% real. The way Kimura fell on the ground was like a typical KO. Uh, I believe he was blindsided. If you notice when he was, he looked and talked to the ref, uh, Ricky Dozan blindsided him with a strike. Uh, very unethical. Like Kimura said, I will never forgive his treachery. I can 100%. I can 100% see why not. Uh, it's it's a despicable way of acting especially when you have an agreement with someone look, look you can see his face those strikes were real he looks delirious he doesn't know what's going on especially when you wake up after you got knocked out you don't know what's going on at first here i'm sure the crowd is going wild the cameras the people talking kimura doesn't know where the hell he is at this point uh, but regarding this uh, this incident, in 2004, a Korean film was released about Riki Dozan. Uh, Masakatsu Funaki portrayed Kimura and he was called in the movie Imura. So uh, it's a shame this happened uh, towards the end. It was a great match. It looked uh, very professional, etc. So if you have anything else to add about this incident, maybe uh, something more. I believe the theory was dismissed in 19... 2011 I'm sorry uh, like I said if you have anything else to add especially the whole Gokudo gangster things uh, if you know a little bit more let me know down below